Welcome to Deep Dive Defense, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. Today's topic focuses on Iran's advanced variants of the Fateh 110 short-range solid propellant ballistic missile, the Khaliji Fars and Hormuz 1 and 2, primarily used for the anti-shipping role. First, we will take a look at the older Khaliji Fars, and in the latter half of the video talk about the more advanced Hormuz 1 and 2. The first special variant of the Fateh 110 was the Khalij e Fars anti-ship ballistic missile, unveiled in 2011. Following the successful deployment of the Gajar 87 variant of the Tondar 69 ballistic missile, using the Fateh 110 platform marked the logical next step in creating a supersonic anti-ship weapon capable of covering most of the Persian Gulf. The coverage of the crucial region was of very high importance for Iran during that era, as it was a potential starting point for hostile operations by Iran's adversaries. For the Khaliji Fars, an improved imaging seeker than that of the Ghadr 87 was necessary due to the higher re-entry speeds and the resulting aero heating encountered. As the seeker became blunter to accommodate a gimbaled optical seeker, the missile decelerated more intensely, encountering high thermal stresses on the seeker's window. Thus, Developing a suitable seeker for the Fateh 110's re-entry speeds was essential, a key technology enabler for such an anti-ship ballistic missile. The added weight of the seeker also reduced the missile's range to 270 kilometers, compared to the 300 achieved by the Fateh 110C of that period. While the missile burns out at nearly Mach 5, its impact speed is believed to be between Mach 1.5 and 2. This strong deceleration may also be caused by evasive maneuvering of the Khaliji Fars to counter naval vessels' missile defense systems. This is facilitated by the target lock of the terminal seeker, which simplifies such maneuvers, enabling a cruder, G-force hardened guidance system. Despite its relatively low impact speed, it was still approximately twice as fast as Iran's subsonic cruise missiles of the Noor and Ghadr family of that era. Its 450-kilogram warhead also delivered significant destructive power to the targets, as it was hitting the less sensitive top of the ship, compared to sea-skimming cruise missiles. As Iran's first mass-produced anti-ship ballistic missile in an era when such missiles were rare developments, the Khaliji Fars notably enhanced Iran's anti-shipping capability against naval vessels equipped with missile defense systems. The short flight time of about five minutes also eliminated the need for mid-course updates on the ship's position and continuous track of it by external sensors. To some extent, the Khalij e Fars negated the need for Iran to invest in the challenging field of supersonic anti-ship cruise missiles, which typically use ramjet propulsion and are much more complex and expensive than a missile like the Khalij e Fars. Supersonic anti-ship cruise missiles benefit from sea skimming to remain below a ship's radar horizon, making detection very late. Their supersonic speed of Mach 2 to Mach 3 stresses a vessel's defense systems, which require time for each engagement cycle and neutralization. Thus, speed alone reduces the feasible engagement cycles of the defense system. A salvo of such supersonic missiles greatly increases the chances of one achieving a successful hit. This well-known defeat mechanism of supersonic anti-ship cruise missiles is hence mimicked by the Khaliji Fars. Although more exposed on its ballistic trajectory, enabling early warning and preparation, its low cost allows for a larger salvo to be launched against a protected naval vessel, increasing the likelihood of a hit. Therefore, Iran smartly circumvented the need for costly supersonic ramjet propulsion technology and its production by leveraging the Khaliji Fars anti-ship ballistic missile as its primary supersonic anti-shipping asset. Once detecting a target and sending its coordinate to a Khalij Yufar's unit, the missiles could be launched and independently fly to their targets due to their quick time of arrival. While it is believed that more advanced anti-ship ballistic missile variants of the Fateh 110, such as the Homuz 2, have largely replaced the Khalij Yufar's in production, it remains in high quantity service with the IRGC Aerospace Force. During the 2010s, Iran's comparably weak naval forces were hence given a supersonic strike capability that could easily be requested by sending coordinates to a mobile Khalij e Fars unit on standby for quick response. In combat, it is believed that the Khalij e Fars has been used against U.S. Navy ships by Yemen's Ansarullah. 
the expenditure of 400 types of missile defense interceptors like the SM-6 during the U.S. campaign from late 2023 to 2024, is a testament of the threat the Khalij EFARS poses. The next major special variant of the Fateh 110, after the Khalij EFARS, were the Hormuz 1 and Hormuz 2. Similar to the Khalij EFARS, these can be described as seeker options for the existing Fateh 110s. Both systems are believed to have entered production in 2014. The Hormuz-1 is an anti-radiation seeker ballistic missile designed for targeting ground and sea-based emitter sources, such as radars and radar-equipped ships. Following it, the more advanced Hormuz-2 serves as an active radar seeker option for the Fateh-110, primarily for anti-shipping roles. The combination of a passive anti-radiation seeker in the Hormuz-1 and an active radar seeker in the Hormuz-2 means that a ship attempting to evade the Hormuz-1 by shutting down its radar emissions could still be attacked by the Hormuz-2. On the other hand, if a Hormuz-2 subjected to jamming, the passive Hormuz-1 can home on the source of the jamming. However, this dual capability was a minor aspect for the creation of the two Hormuz variants. While the added weight of the Seeker systems reduced the range of the earlier Hormuz batches to 250 kilometers, the pointy nose of the Radome allowed for higher re-entry and impact speeds. This increased impact speed is crucial for penetrating the defense systems on advanced naval vessels. The Hormuz 2, with its active radar Seeker, had a better chance of penetrating a ship's defenses, maintaining a terminal speed of about Mach 2.5. Both Hormuz 1 and 2 could be used at day and night, while it is believed that at least the earlier versions of the Khaliji Fars were limited for use under good weather conditions. The Hormuz-1, with its passive anti-radiation seeker, could also threaten many surface-to-air missile systems in neighboring countries, only excluding most high-end systems, like for example the Patriot Pac-3. Thus, the Hormuz-1 provided Iran with a so-called standoff, seed-dead capability. The neutralization of the opponent's air defenses as Iran's air force had just very limited capacities in this field. Coupled with the missile's inertial guidance, the passive seeker allowed it to impact with its relative large 450kg warhead, even if the surface-to-air missile radar had shut down to protect itself by emission silence. This is a clear advantage of a high-velocity weapon that are less affected by gyroscope drift of their inertial guidance due to their quick time-of-arrival feature. The synergic effect of the combination of Hormuz-1 and Hormuz-2 may have driven the development of an off-road capable twin launcher truck for the Fateh-110, able to be stationed in the rugged terrain of Iran's southern coasts, increasing survivability. However, the combination of these two missiles was not the only solution for handling high-end naval vessels equipped with countermeasures and defensive systems. The Khaliji Fars, with its optical and later infrared imaging seeker, would have added another dimension to the seeker diversity in a salvo launch, complicating the countermeasuring system's task to simultaneously defeat them. A passive infrared seeker, a passive radar seeker, and an active radar seeker represent a difficult combo to counter. This greatly increases the chances of successfully neutralizing the target in a salvo launch scenario. The use of the Fateh 110 platform one of the lowest cost short-range ballistic missiles in the world in its class, underscores the rationale behind such salvo launches. It is believed that a unified version of the Hormuz Seeker was developed at some stage, integrating the passive Seeker function of the Hormuz 1 into the active Seeker Hormuz 2, creating a single Seeker with both capabilities. While an active radar Seeker adds costs compared to a passive Seeker, this would not be a hurdle for a special purpose weapon in the price category of the Hormuz. The anti-shipping requirements of the IRGC aerospace forces of that era certainly allowed for large quantities of all three Seeker variants to be produced. It is believed that, at some point in the late 2010s, a low-cost variant of the Fateh 110 could have just used each of these three Seeker options as required, which was later reduced to two as the Hormuz 1 function was integrated into the Hormuz 2 Seeker. This lead to the standardization of these thermally guided variants of the Fateh 110 into a single missile with two seeker options, which had three guidance modes. It is also believed that the unified Hormo seeker can be used in the Fateh 110F, known as the Fateh 313, improving the Hormoz range to about 450 kilometers. 
This capability allowed the IRGC Aerospace Force to cover all of the Persian Gulf from more secure, deeper launch positions. It also allowed the targeting of air and missile defense radars across the Persian Gulf, where adversary assets are concentrated. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.